Broadcasting from Silicon Valley, California, this is Conversations with Jenny Lynn. Today I am so excited. You're watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. And today I have a very fascinating, intriguing guest to share with you. I have chosen those adjectives very carefully because the material we are bringing out today does not resonate with a lot of people. And I'm going to quote my guest, Patricia Muna, when I say this, the difference between, one of the differences between the truth and what people believe to be the truth is the experience. Uh, Patricia Mona is Canadian. She is a remote viewer, psychic medium. And I stumbled upon her watching a show one day and decided I want to meet her and I want to share her with you. Patricia, welcome to Conversations with Jenny Lynn. Thank you so much for having me. I feel very honored to be here with you today. Uh, thank you. I'm honored to be sharing this time with you as well. And I'll tell you why. Because there are people who do not believe that someone can possess the gifts that you have. Mm -hmm. They think it's craziness. And they just say, oh, I don't feel comfortable with this. And they run away from it. There are people who do not believe that there is a parallel world uh, in, in existence with the, the physical world that we live in, a spiritual world. And that world plays a huge part in a lot of what is happening in this physical world. There are people who do not believe they're spiritual beings that descended from the spiritual world to have a physical experience in a human body. There are people who do not believe they're wicked, evil people that can manipulate dark forces and hurt other people's lives. And I speak to this because I have experience with it. So anyone who has a problem with what I'm saying, I understand. It's not your life. You haven't had my experience, so you wouldn't be able to relate to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I must add, before I, I let you respond, and please correct me if you hear me say anything that is erroneous. But I have to tell you, I was one of those people who thought all of this was craziness. And that is why it affected my life as long as it did. And it happened about 20 years. And I had about 15 different people tell me it was happening. And then physical manifestations started to occur. And that's when I woke up. And that's when I really was able to go do the research and learn what I've learned, which is why someone like you jumps out at me. So Patricia, before I hand this over to you, I listened to an interview with you the, um, on the internet with a guy called Jason Shorka, in which you um, discussed your gift of remote viewing, where you've worked with the equivalent of our FBI to find missing bodies of 29 people without leaving your physical location. Can you tell us, let's start with that. You know, I, I always say, uh, the quote is, um, the only difference between a skeptic and a believer is the experience. And absolutely, you're so bang on with the way you described it, because I can explain to you what I've experienced, but it's still my truth, right? So um, until you're open enough to be able to have the experience for yourself, you'll never know it's real. It's like, if I never saw a kangaroo in real life, you could show me a picture and I could go, oh, that doesn't exist. Someone drew that, right? Because it's not in my reality. But now I've done it so many times and predicted so many things that have come to pass that there's just no denying that there's something to this. And it's gotten to the point where I actually teach this stuff. Um, and I am going to be teaching a course uh, called Quantum Psychic Decoding the Matrix. I just posted that uh, because it, to me, it's so common sense, it's so easy. When I tune into a person, um, when I do remote viewing and I see a picture of the person or I tune in, we'll say like this, having you here, 
I will literally get a download. It's like I've watched your movie or read your book and I'm just letting you know what chapter you're on, where you're at your movie. And um, best way to explain it is it's kind of like the game of charades. I can see it all happening, but then I've got to interpret also what it is that I'm seeing. And that level of interpretation, it did take some time for me to be under, able to understand exactly what spirit was saying. And as you were mentioning about physical manifestations, so I was a palliative oncology nurse for 13 years. So death and dying, right at the age of 19, I hopped into that. And um, it, for me, I could walk into a patient's room, scan the patient, from head to toe and know exactly what was wrong with them if, if where the cancer was if it was spreading um if even right down to when they were going to pass away and honestly i didn't know that anything was different right. or weird with me because it's not like i see dead people walking through walls and it's not like i hear disembodied voices in my head to me it's <laughs> not like that at all right. it's a knowing it's like oh yeah i remember when you did that oh i remember when you were wearing the red shirt and the blue jeans when you got kidnapped it's a knowing, it's a remembering. And um, so I learned very quickly that illness has a resonance. And I know, uh, because I, I deal with energy all the time, is how I do my work is I'm able to read energy. Every single person has their own unique thumbprint of energy, their, their resonance signature that is unique to them. So it's my job to be able to hook into that resonance, be able to open up that book and see what's happening within that field of information for that person. And so... Going into nursing, I like I said, I honestly thought that every nurse could do that. I, I thought that was a natural thing. I didn't know, right? Until it became my experience where, you know, people were passing away right when I said they would, or people were getting pregnant right when they said they would. And then I had the opportunity um, to, you know, right place, right time, work on a missing person case. One of my girlfriends, uh, when we were having coffee this one day, uh, she's also into psychic stuff and she got a text message with a photo of a missing person from her cousin out in Wetaskiwin saying, hey, I know you're psychic, so can you tell me where this missing lady is? Well, she couldn't see anything on, on that. So she, yeah, she handed me the phone, I took a look at the picture and immediately I saw where the woman was. I saw the color of the couch right down to the floral pattern of the couch she was laying on. I knew she wasn't dead. I knew she faked her death um, and I knew the reason why. And so that case was actually the only person that I found alive. And um, after that, it, it just came so easy that they found her within four hours. So the cousin that lived out in Wetaskiwin called me to say, oh my goodness, thank you. You were bang on right down to the color of the couch. Because how did you do that? I'm like, I don't know, it just came. So I said to him, I said, well, can you give me more? Like, can I do this again? Because to me, it was so easy. And he's like, no, RCMP up here, that's the feds, that's equivalent of the FBI. Um, they're like, no, we don't use psychics, you know, there's no way. But there is a team of law enforcement down out of Phoenix, Arizona called Find Me. And Kelly Snyder is the founder. He is retired uh, DEA. And he created this group of law enforcement that are active and retired. They have everything from um, search, track, and rescue, linguistic specialists, handwriting specialists, body language experts. And then there's 115 of us elite psychics that volunteer on this team to provide coordinates to where we believe missing people can be located. And um, so I got involved with that group and I worked on that group for about eight years before the RCMP. So what happened was a Canadian case got picked up by Find Me. And because I was already in Canada, they sent me to the location of where the girl was missing. And so when I was able to um, help out on that case, it led, to, one case led to the next, led to the next. But as a general rule of thumb, the police up here, they laugh at psychics. They literally laugh at psychics. And so it was very difficult. I had to be so flippant accurate because I mean it, if you can be 95% correct on a case, but if there's 5% that you're wrong on, they will crucify you for it. So you have to be very accurate, um, very precise, even right down to uh, this, 
what's happened in the case. And so for me, when I tune in, thank God the whole story unfolds the way it does, because then I can explain and I see it. Like if the body is laying in the kitchen, I, I did one case where, um, this woman stabbed her mother to death and I was able to tell, I called them immediately and told them it was the daughter and that where the body was, what happened to her, all of it, because it unfolds naturally. And then those police <laughs> kept going and my name got spread across Canada. And so I've worked with the likes of um, Saskatchewan Historical Crimes Unit. I've worked with homicide, search and rescue. Um, I've even, uh, one of the greatest um, pleasures actually, or I, honors is, honor is the word I'm looking for. There was a missing boy out in Siksika Nation out here uh, in Gleeson, Alberta. That's about an hour and a half from here. And I was already working on a cold case for the RCMP out in Gleeson, Alberta. And um, I was gonna be heading down there for the day to go over case files. And the officer called me and she goes, meet me at the river. We, uh, she, she goes, I need you, before she, sorry, before she said meet me at the river, she goes, I need you to drop what you're doing, take a look at this picture and tell me where this kid is. And so immediately I saw that he had drowned in the river. And then she goes, okay, meet me at the river. I'll get the RCMP boats. We're going. And I spent eight hours on the river uh, with the RCMP. And we were able to locate him exactly where I told them he would be under the conditions, unfortunately, that I said. And it was a big honor because um, the medicine man came out to bless us after. And, and we had a beautiful meal in, in the boy's honor. And it's just it's, I try to make a difference wherever I can. And I do offer my services for free. I don't believe that any psychic who has this ability should be charging someone in their I work agree work. with that. There's no way. I think that that is so shady. If you can help Thank a person, you. you absolutely should. So every single missing person case I've ever done, including the reward that I was rewarded for finding a person that got donated. I refuse to take a cent. Thank That's my you. way of paying it forward to society. I do not believe that we should be cashing in on someone else's sorrows. Thank so, you. And, but I'm also very selective on what cases I do because I know that there are some that I just can't see. I, if I can't hook in to their energetic signature and open up that book, there's no point in me doing it. So what I do when I'm working on a case I have to take what I see in my head and I have to be able to um, go onto Google Earth and literally drop a pin of where I believe that search and rescue should um, search. And so uh, I have an example here of one of the cases that I did. So sure. back, in, back in 2015 in Wimberley, Texas, there was huge floods and there was a house on stilts that had eight people in it and it went down the river, the river washed it. One person got out alive and um, actually, so there was nine because there was eight that went missing and there was two I couldn't find because I told them right from the beginning, I can't get into their signature. So I won't be able to find them to date. They still have never been found. So what I did was I was sitting in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, and uh, what I did was I was able to actually even FaceTime. At one point, I was able to FaceTime with the search and rescue team and lead them up to one of the bodies. But here's a point of where two, uh, an example of where the bodies were found on the case that I was working on. So it says in this, it says, it was stated the little boy was found on the Blanco River close to Water Park Road. The psychic appears accurate. Her pin's yellow, mine red. So here's where I told them to search. Mm -hmm. And that's where they were found. Wow. So I have to say this, Patricia. I have great frustrations with people who are so closed minded just because that's something okay, is. Though. I know. Wait, here's the thing that's okay. We're not out to change people's um, thought paradigm. They right. need to do that because this yeah. is my truth. I know what I'm capable of. Exactly. And so it, it, their truth, it doesn't, I, it doesn't affect me because that's, but, and that just means that they haven't had that big mystical experience yet 
that blew their mind. Because once you do, no one can take that from you. No one can say it can happen. Right? You are speaking my you are speaking my thoughts. The problem is what frustrates me is not that they can't resonate, that they're not evolved enough to understand, is the judgment you get from them. And so many people treat you like something is wrong with you for a gift you were given. Yeah, In but your here's case, the look what you're doing with it. Yeah, but here's here's the thing, that's on them. How how someone treats you that's their karma, mm -hmm. but how you react is yours. So you can go ahead and feed into the vicious cycle, or you can step back and go, you're just not there yet. That's all. That's mm -hmm. uh, because I dealing with cops, trust me when I say I have dealt with some of the most hardened, skeptical, not nice people that are usually men <laughs> anyways, because it's like, how, how can I do what I do? You know, it, I don't know. They, the bodies just show up where I say they are. I don't know. It's easy for me to do this when I can get into someone's signature. So I have worked on cases that I can't find because sometimes things come in a lot clearer than others, but it's, I'm still willing to try the best that I can to bring that loved one home. Because all I know is that I got three boys and if any of my kids went missing, I would need you. I would need everybody. And I, if you had the ability to help find my kid, when my child was missing, I'd kidnap you until you help me find my kid. <laughs> exactly. That. I'd be begging you. So who am I to not pay that forward first? So exactly. I do, I try to take, I try to do as many as I can. Um, and as accurately as I can too. There's a science to this stuff. There really is. I'm a little girl. I had gifts that no one in my family could relate to. I don't have anything like yours. I've been smothering it. I've been pushing it away from But me. now is the time. Well, to I, believe, I believe it. when some people did some really dark stuff to me that hurt me for years, I couldn't figure out what's going on with my life. It wasn't gelling. And then over the course of years, people came and told me what was done. And I was thinking they're local. I'm not going back to them. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, the reason that God never removed it, because I know God has the power to just clear the stuff away, uh, is because I had to wake up. Yeah. I yeah. had to, this was given to me for a purpose, not same as yours, but I have to play some part in changing the world. And that's what I believe. Absolutely. And now, now here's, here's the thing. Um, I was telling you about this before. So for anyone who's dealing with dark forces, because they are out there, you can call it positive and negative demon angels, whatevs. It is what it is. It's mm -hmm. just a dank energy that, mm -hmm. and when it's thrown at you, it feels like daggers in your chest, daggers in your back, daggers in your Thank stomach. Thank you. Here's the thing. This is when you have to put on your armor of God. Literally, what I do when I'm under a psychic attack is I will imagine, you know, that steel armor that the people would wear on the, the jolting suit, you know, when they're on the horse. Well, yeah. I imagine that coming down of light all over me and, you know, they can't see me. I can see them and I push out the darkness and then I bring, breathe in the light and push it out into my auric field. Um, the quickest, one of the, another quick way to change your energy is to just imagine all the pores on your skin, every pore in your body, because your, your skin breathes, right? So what you do is you imagine that light of God coming down around you and literally breathe it into every cell of your body and ignite that light again, because that light is what is going to protect us against darkness. Once you have that light ignited, you float above it. I could sleep in the, I could sleep in Alcatraz like a baby. You want to know why? Because though that's a lower dimensional reality that is stuck in there. I don't vibe with it. Therefore it can't touch me. It cannot touch me. When you radiate up here, it's like, not today, Satan. Sorry. <laughs> So have you been to Alcatraz and have you felt I that? Have. And I have. I have been there too. I did a paranormal investigation there. And there are some really dark things in there. Absolutely. But it's a choice. Once you recognize mm -hmm. it, you have the choice to rebuke it, get it away from you and spread your light, get back into the light. And you literally float above it. You become invisible where if you want, you can view what's going on as in a remote viewer being objective, 
but you don't need to feel it. The attack is when you feel it, right? When your chest tightens and your throat closes and you feel like you can't breathe. That's when you know it's gotten in and you gotta get it out. So things like taking a hot salt bath, take a whole cup of Himalayan salt and soak in that for 20 minutes. Binaural beats are another one, another great way to raise your vibration. You can find them on YouTube. And what binaural beats are, are different theta tones and that you can listen to um, that, that sync up the two hemispheres of the brain to create the desired response. So we'll say you can't sleep, right? Um, you listen to binaural beats and it's going to make your body produce more melatonin and off to bed you go, right? Same thing with um, the vibration of love and healing. That's 528 hertz. Pop on 528 hertz and it's going to spread love from the inside out. Visualize that love, your light coming out into your field because trust me when I say I read fields of energy. That's how I do my job. If you guys didn't have it, I wouldn't have a job, right? <laughs> So you got to take care of your field and literally let go of what no longer serves you. So here's the cool thing about forgiveness. When we forgive someone and we let something go, it does remove itself from the auric field and from the timeline, from the book almost, it releases it. So someone like me might pick up certain things within your life, but not pick up that because you're not still energetically tied to that event, right? So when we've cleared something, when we've forgiven it, it's no longer a part of our story. It, and it won't show up necessarily within your story. Well, you know, I went, I went out on a limb when I decided to just do this because I'm beyond people's judgments. I know who I am. You gotta be you. You gotta shine, and stand tall and be you, girl. This world needs you. Your journey is not my journey. We all have our own journeys and I am not here to please people. I'm here to do what I'm here to do. And I hope I please people in the process. So Patricia, you were how old when you realized you had this gift to be a remote viewer? Um, you know, well, here's the thing. I didn't know that you guys didn't have it. It's just <laughs> like, I have this thing called synesthesia where I see my letters and numbers and colors. And for anyone who does psychic work, they'll know that you, when you're in your right brain, which is where we need to be in that daydream state when we're doing remote viewing, you can't perceive letters and numbers in that zone, whether you're astral traveling, having an outer body experience, or just remote viewing, you're not going to see letters and numbers. Well, I do. So what happens is if I'm chasing a license plate, I will literally see it like a barcode of colors and I'll know by what color is the barcode, what number and letter is associated with that. So I, it's literally just decoding your abilities is what it is. I pay very close attention to my energy because then when I know what's mine, I also know what's not mine. And then I can ask my higher self, my spirit guides, whatever realm I need information from, what is this pertaining? What does this person need from me in this moment? And the other quick way to shift your energy very quickly is when you've had a bomb dropped on you, sit back, breathe in the light, get into that space first of peace. Because when you try and meditate, when you're full of anxiety, yeah, it doesn't work. You're not going anywhere other than on loop, right? So get into that beautiful space and just ask, what is this here to teach me? <laughs> what are you here to teach me? The minute you ask that, your guides are gonna download the answer and boom, it's released. It's done. What are you here to teach me? Because the minute you're taught the lesson, you can move on. But lessons will keep on being on repeat until you turn around and go, hey, what the heck is this about? So we need to learn to ask, what is this about? And so you work, you've helped the police and you're also a psychic medium. What have you noticed over, I would say, the last five years? Do you think more people are waking up to the reality of these phenomena? Because um, I was raised Catholic, and a lot of people who were, who were raised with, with dogma, with the religion thing, their minds are locked in to those 
I, what do you want to call them? Boxes and circles. And they cannot see outside of that, although they're privy, some of them, to some of these experiences we are discussing. They call them coincidence. They have different, different tags that they give them. Have you noticed a, a more of awakening happening on the planet that more and more people are waking up to this reality? 100%. 100%. And the reason why I say that is um, the amount of people that are begging um, for answers right now. They're coming out in droves. I honestly, I've never been busier. I'm petrified to be in front of a camera. I'm, I'm kind of camera shy, to be very honest with you. But I'm being forced to, to do classes online and to stand in my power and get used to it because the messages are needed. And so I truly believe that the people who went through um, that heavy time about seven years ago, those are the ones that are now becoming the teachers and being asked to stand in their power and speak up and speak their truth. So there is an evolution of the souls where the student is slowly becoming the teacher. Because I'm going to be honest, I went to school to be a nurse. I didn't go to school to be a psychic. This just comes naturally. But I think that the reason why things are really being ignited right now is because it's a soul yearning to know why we are here. There is something that is being turned on and turned up where we are finally opening our eyes and, go, and, and saying, okay, if this is real, what else is real? We need to know. We need to realize that we are more than just a human being having a spiritual experience. As a matter of fact, it's the other way around. We're spirit having a human experience. This is just an avatar, a meat suit that, 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 that gets it, that gets the job done, that brings in that higher information and directs it into the material world. Well, when you're plugged into the divine, when you have that open line of communication through the power of prayer, meditation, talking to your gods, talking to the big guy, you don't misstep anymore. It's literally, it becomes a scavenger hunt of miracles. I can't explain to you enough how much my life changed when I started to step into my passion because your passion and your purpose are married. So what ignites your soul? What ignites your soul? That's what we need to be doing more of right now. And as a, as a society that's stuck on a hamster wheel, how the heck do you find your joy when you're doing something for eight to 10 hours a day you know, making somebody else rich in their company or, you know, hating on your coworkers. How do you turn on the happy switch just because you punched out at five o'clock? It takes the rest of the night to shake off the bad day and then you're doing it all over again. Step out. It's because so mundane. The universe will squeeze you and keep squeezing you until you actually get out of it and start doing something that makes your soul sing. There's a reason why some people love making shoes or love fashion or love helping people and nursing and, and doctors and, and musicians. It's because it's all needed here. Every single one of us is needed here. What would this world have been like without Wayne Dyer's presence in it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The influence, you know, of Louise Hay. Look at how many lives these people changed. What if their parents had never met? Right? It's a miracle that we're all here. So we, the more we ignite that passion within us, the more we're going to know who we are and why we're here. I can completely relate to everything you've just said. And I get so excited when someone is speaking my language because this language is so... Uh, I don't even want to use fluffy adjectives like unique. It's beyond that. It's weird to people because they're not awake. And so you get so much judgment instead of, but you know, I think that once you learn to hold your own, you don't need people's judgments. And as I, as I, um, like you just said, I was forced into this to wake up because I kept running from it because it's not what we call normal or it wasn't taught to us. It's not part of our wiring when the foundation was being set. Mm -hmm. So as a fully mature adult that's been told all of our lives, you have to eat sugar because sugar is the right thing for you. One day you get a download, no, it's salt or it's boat, you know, it's a little bit of both. It's really difficult to wrap your head around a concept, especially 
when you don't have physical evidence to support it. Absolutely. Yes, but it's now is the time, right? And and I think that's why we're here to to awaken people. And if we you got to em embrace your individuality. It was given to us for a reason and the strength to be that light for others is given to us for a reason. I've always had the gift of gab and it's driven people nuts my whole life. And now I get paid to talk, it's crazy, right? So your vibe attracts your tribe 100%. So to me in the world that I float in, this is normal. I have my peeps that like, we've even sat out in the middle of the forest with our laser beams looking for aliens. <laughs> I, you know, and, and, and building forts. I love this stuff. So I've immersed myself with people who also love it. So in my world, it's like, this is fun. Are we going to chase aliens this weekend? We, what are we doing? <laughs> we, we praying for humanity. We've even come, there's a group of us that come to my studio at least once a month where we'll stay and pray. We'll pray for the world, pray for healing, pray for humanity. And we stay until the sun comes up. And it's fun. I love doing that stuff. So I don't know. I guess it depends on who you surround yourself with. When you were growing up and when you discovered you had this gift, you left medicine to do this. Yeah. What was the reaction of your family, your parents, your husband, your friends? What kind of reaction did you get from them? And second part of the question, did you think that people took you more seriously when they saw you physical, physically delivering results? when you were working with the police, when you were finding bodies? Yes, but I mean, my readings are good too. Like I offer I offer a money back guarantee on my readings. <laughs> I'm gutsy enough to do that. Um, so I don't know, I would never, I believe in giving a client um, everything that they're looking for. And if I can't blow your socks off, I have no right to charge you for a reading. You know what I mean? Like I'm human. I have my days too. Um, so I do have that money back guarantee there for, for a reason. Um, but I think it's all about the integrity as well of, of the person. And so the police working, working with them, yes, pr produce, it's all about results with them. It's all about, and, and very accurate results. Uh, so I've built, I've done it enough now that my name gets passed around. My name's been passed around. They've heard of me. I actually have um, a police resume that I give when, it, when I get called into a case, I give them proof. Like I even have a letter from the RCMP. I got to hide the, because it's got the constable's information on it, but I actually have a letter from the RCMP stating that, yes, I've worked with them. Yes, I have found a missing person. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm good at what I do. So, so I love that. I'm good at what I do. So do you have police calling you from around the world now to help them? I do. Yeah, Ooh. I do. Yeah, I do. And so I don't just work with one police force. I wherever you need me. And I only work with the immediate family though. If it's a if it's a person other than the police that's calling me, I don't take it unless it's the immediate family because if I'm donating my time um, to be able to do this, I'm dropping pins. It's, it can take me hours, sometimes days to come up with a location. It depends on how, qu how quickly and easily I can tune in, right? And how clear things come in. Um, but I would never want to just give pertinent, sensitive information to just anyone. And I, the only reason why I work with them is they can get it into the hands of the investigators that need those coordinates so they can actually be looked upon. Because if I hand in coordinates and, and no one's checking, what, why did I do it? Right? So the police will call you up and say, we have a missing person in Jonestown, or we have a, pers we have a missing person. Can you help us to locate this person? You sit in your home and you're in, um, in Alberta. Yep. Calgary. 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 You're in Calgary and you sit in Calgary and you can tell them any place in the world where that person yes. is. Yes. And you've had 29 successes with this. Yes. yes. My goodness. Do you want, I can show you an example of how it yeah, works. Yeah, show us, show us. So, I'm sure my viewers want to see this. So remote viewing is the ability to be able to stay in one place 
and look into anything, a person, place, lo location, whatever, a target. So I went to the Monroe Institute and was taught by Paul Elder to deepen my connection, to deepen my natural abilities of this. And so one of the exercises that we do is called an outbounder exercise. So we have to be able to basically tune into the consciousness of someone who's alive, look through their eyes, taste through their mouth, feel through their hands, all the senses, and tell me what you see. So this, we get this after, um, after the exercise to see how accurate we are and uh, to see how good we did. So all we get, it's a manila envelope that he puts at on the front, um, at the front of the room. And this code is energetically linked and that code is on the manila envelope. So we have to tune into what's in the envelope, what the target is and where it is and look through their eyes. So this um, was what she was staring at. This is what I drew. That is amazing. You see the buildings and the yeah. water, right? The buildings and there's the water and then that. How long ago was this? Uh, this one I think was from a couple of years ago, 2018. This was an exercise. This was, this was an exercise. Same thing with, uh, oh, this is another good one. So this target was off planet. It was a planet Mars. And again, it can be a person, place, or thing in the entire universe, right? So tuning into this one, it was a cool exercise because the teacher said, okay, I'm going to show you a video in 20 minutes. What's in that video? What's happening in that video? Remote view, what's going to be on that TV screen in 20 minutes when we're done the exercise. So this again was the target. Didn't know what it is. All we get is that number, right? So check it out. So what the video was, was a rocket ship from the US going up into outer space. The one rocket breaks off, the other one lands on Mars and this thing opens up and it's the Mars Rover and it crawls on the surface of Mars and it takes pictures of the surface of Mars. So that's, and that's the Rover right there and you can see Mars, right? We'll check this out. It unfolds like a whole story in my head. So there's a rocket ship and it even wrote red, white, blue. I knew it was American going straight up into space, right? Check this out. I drew the whole movie or the whole clip. There's Mars and there's the crawly dude with the camera on him. So, that, I, yeah. that is unbelievable. So, so, and it comes easy to me. So that's why it's like, honestly, it's fun. I almost look at it like a video game or, or a puzzle, puzzle that I'm here to solve. And I, I love doing it. But not everyone has that gift, right? No. Well, I, I don't know. I think everyone is psychic. We just are at varying levels, right? It's kind of like if you have 10 fingers, you can play the piano, but how many of us can play like an actual concert pianist? Right? So it's all there. It's just how far down the rabbit hole have you gone? And what is your connection? What is, what is your faith like to the creator and, and that energy? Because when I do this work, there is a big matrix out there that I'm plugging into in order to get my information, right? And so, and to handle, so back to when you mentioned that you were brought up Catholic, I was brought up born again Christian. And so in the faith, in the Bible, it talks about psychics and fortune tellers in a very negative light. It says it's yes. up. Yes. So here's the other thing. It also talks about the gift of the spirits. And yes, I, believe it, I believe it's first Corinthians 13. I yes. think it is. No, it talks about the gift of the spirit. Yes. And so when I, and I had a big problem with the name psychic, when I first started doing this stuff, I'm like, well, what else am I going to call it? So I was meditating one night and I was like, say my prayers going, Lord, why, why do I need to use the word psychic? It's such a bad, it has such a bad connotation. And what I heard was, I get to minister salvation to people that would never set foot in a church. You can call it love. You can call it spiritual connection. You can call it universal energy. You can call it God. I create a space 
for you guys to explore your spirituality, right? By exploring mine, I help you explore yours. And so it's, it, it's by grace you are saved through faith. It's your faith. Each and every one of us has a certain level of faith. And when it is really high, you can move mountains. You seriously can make stuff oh, happen. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. I when know. Everything changes. There is no, it, it's endless. The blocks just dissolve away. And you realize that the more you stay in the now, the more you have power over yourself, your actions, reactions, and reality. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and think of the way we manifest. Our thoughts become our actions. Our actions do become our reality, right? It starts up here. It starts in here. So when we open up those lines of communication, everything does naturally change because we're getting the best advice, right? You're not going to believe how the time is flying. Mm. And I don't want the time to run out before I ask you this question. Do you teach classes and where would someone who's got these gifts and they're getting bits and pieces of it they don't quite know how to connect with it do you teach classes to help people awaken yes i do so rare I, so i actually teach international uh psychic psychic development retreats which are amazing i do them in sedona i have the perfect um retreat center that's just nestled in the heart of cathedral rock right under a vortex and i take people there because with what we do is we go and we meditate in all the vortexes and because the energy is so amazing there it's super easy for people to tune in and be able to explore their own abilities on that deeper level because of the energy so i do normally do that but because of the restrictions and everything that's been canceled i was supposed to do one last may supposed to do that one this may so i'm i'm actually taking my retreat and we're going local we're going to stimulate our own economy and we're going to go local um so i do that you usually do twice that. a year you can't that? Do, you can't do them online oh so yes i was getting to that so i do teach online classes through zoom and i have an amazing one that i'm going to be teaching called quantum psychic decoding the matrix and that's where i will go into depth about how i do what i do how you can access those deeper realms of consciousness because it isn't just me i've just figured out how to access it something that other people just need to awaken to. So I will go through my processes, my steps on how I find a missing person. Um, I will go through uh, everything, everything I know I'm going to be thrown out into that course uh, because I know that it isn't just me. Everyone is psychic. And so in this course, I'm going to be providing the space for you guys, and I'm going to be giving exercises for you to be able to strengthen that third eye and an ability to be able to bring it in because it is through visualization. So I have very specific um, uh, visualization techniques that I'm going to be teaching to access those higher realms. Uh, we're also going to end off with a transcendental meditation where you can literally bring in that energy of, of your guides and your angels and deepen and turn it up because trust me, they can get really loud if you ask them to. Uh, so you're not missing things. So we're gonna be doing some work. It's gonna be very interactive. People can ask questions and, and throw in their experiences in there as well. Um, but yeah, that one's gonna be awesome. That starts, it's gonna be a four part series that starts on March 17th, sorry, February 17th, ends on March 24th. So for four Wednesdays, it's an hour and it's only a hundred bucks. So 25 bucks for each course or each class. And then I also, and then I also send out um, the recording too. So you guys can listen and watch it as many times as you want. And then that way you have the exercises there. And the reason why I wanted to do it uh, once a week was so you have the week to practice so that you're ready for the next step. Cause I want to open you guys up. So. Can you leave the information now where someone could sign up? Yeah. Um, oh, and I also teach meditation classes as well, which are really cool. That's um, what yeah. I would be very interested in. I'd like to start with meditation. Could you tell us there where yeah. we can sign up so someone so, watching can sign up? So my website is www.patriciamona.com. 
www.monawith.com and Mona with two ends. Um, and on my website, you'll see the little tab at the top that says classes and meditations. And you can just click on that. And then you'll see a, a list of all of my current classes. And right now, all of them are online just because of the restrictions and stuff. And I think I'm going to keep doing them online because I'm actually having fun doing it. I just got to get over the camera shy stuff. Well, you look great on camera, so get over it. Thank you. Thank you. So, Patricia, you teach meditation, you teach this other class, you're also a psychic medium. How does someone get a booking with you? Uh, again, through my website, www.patriciamona.com. Uh, and there's a booking. Could you book spell out Mona? Because online, I saw your, your last name spelled M O O N A. Oh, no. No, it's spelled, so it's www.patriciamonna.com. So all one word. This is awesome. Okay, I am sure you're going to have, look. Uh, that went fast. But I'm not done yet. So we're going to keep going because I want to make sure I get everything in here. I know how busy you are. And when I meet someone like you, I'm very, very excited because I know for sure I'm not crazy because of things that are happening and people are making me think I'm crazy who can't relate. So thank you. You're like medicine for my soul. Oh, thank I you. think it's sad that um, we live in a world where we, our minds have been so trained to believe what, what some people and some, I, I don't want to like, name any any particular organization but i think you get what i'm saying they really control what we believe what we think how we act and i honestly um now that i'm awake feel really sad for people who are still living under those restraints mm -hmm. and constraints because we are free spirits and we have each of us we have a different individual journey here on this planet and i what saddens me is how many people have come and left unaware because they have bought into whatever someone that they trusted was telling them instead of going out and doing and trying to find out on their own. I've always been a free spirit and been adventurous and open and it's brought both good and bad my way, but I wouldn't change it because I am the evolved soul because I'm not a closed minded person. Absolutely. Before we say goodbye on camera, what haven't I asked you? Do you think it's critical that you leave with people watching this? Oh, guard your consciousness, guys, big time. Be very careful what you're focusing on because it is expanding at such an enormous rate. And you'll, you will notice them as coincidences, synchronicities, but here's the problem. When, um, when we're being bombarded with negativity, it literally leaks into and, and destroys our ability to manifest. If we have scattered thoughts that are everywhere and we can't stay focused on the now, on what we need to focus on, um, you're literally scattering your energy and you won't get anything done because it's paralysis by analysis, right? You're just frozen because your mind won't shut up and you don't know where to start. So it's kind of like buffering, things shut down. Don't do that. Step away. Look up mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. Get into a meditation. Get out into nature. Ground yourself, you know, and, and cleanse your energy and breathe in that light. You need a shift because, you guys, it's going to get heavy out there. It is. This is where the tools come in. We know better now. We know better. And they wouldn't, honestly, your people wouldn't be watching you if they didn't know better. We know something's going on. We do. What do we do with it? Protect yourself. Because as you heal yourself, that's how we heal the world. If I hadn't healed my worst thing that ever happened in my life, my father was killed in Vancouver, Washington in 2004. I'm and it so changed sorry. my life. It complete, you know how when Jason Shurka mentioned September 9th? Yeah. That was, that was the day my dad died. And it's literally the reason why I do what I do. And so, yeah, big Is story. Behind accident? That. Pardon? Was he killed by accident? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was an accident. And, um, it, but it changes you. Your trauma changes you. You, we have to embrace the good, the bad, the ugly, because had he not died when he died, how he died, I'd still be nursing. I wouldn't be doing this. So I have to honor what brought me here. The worst pain in my life 
brought me here. Same for me. Yes. Same for me. But my trauma was a different one to yours. I'm so sorry for the one you, for your trauma. But look where it brought us, right? So we just got to honor it. And that's how I honor my dad. Every life that I get a chance to make a difference in, it's because he gave up his. Thank you. That is so beautiful. You're welcome. I'm so sorry you lost your dad. Thank you. How is your mother doing? She passed a year later in my arms of breast cancer. It was pretty brutal. <laughs> it was brutal. Yeah. So you yeah. lost both of your both parents. Of them. Yeah. 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 Do you but, have a lot of siblings? Uh, no, I don't actually. I've got a brother, but he's way out in BC and I don't get a chance to see him very often. So. Yeah. Well, now you have us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Family is a family I create and your family yeah. now. So yeah. I'm saying you big hugs, lots of love. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank show. you for being here. And I hope, um, Patricia, that people watching this show that, that really struggle with believing this exists, that we have these gifts, that you can, you can uh, hurt people with dark stuff, you can locate people who are missing that they wouldn't be so close-minded because you're actually working with canadians fbi hello <laughs> they work i'm telling you any smart investigator would look if and use any means possible so yeah they, they, but they, they you're are. delivering results so it's not a case of somebody telling you something that sounds like mumbo jumbo you are finding bodies so people if you if you have a difficult time accepting that this is a part of our life on this planet it's okay but we have some evidence here for you today and i hope that you keep an open mind because when you have a closed mind you can be blocking your own blessings absolutely I and i thank you for watching conversations with jenny lynn when a conversation is all you need to be inspired and if this gorgeous woman did not inspire you you are asleep and I will see you next time. Broadcasting from Silicon Valley, California, this is Conversations with Jenny Lynn.